you doing all that time on the inside. What does prison reform look like to you? Prison reform for me is 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 ending, you know, the racial disparities that put only our people in prison. You know, understanding, like you said, that this was my first crime and and I was a young kid with, with a, a promising future and not being given the ability and opportunity to do something different other than being going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Not having um, programs and, and, and things that, that eliminate prison for, for, for youth. You know, that's what prison reform looks like for me. How do, how do we limit the reasons and, you know, that disproportionately affect our people in our communities? Because that's because we're the main people inside of prisons. And if you look at what we're going to jail for and the amount of time that we're spending, it don't make sense. You know, it doesn't make sense. And that's why when you look at the fact that, okay, they're saying, oh, now drug crimes. We, we, oh, we, we, we want to eliminate these people who've been doing 20 and 30 and 40 years for drug crimes. It, it never made sense. And it only disproportionately attacked our communities because we were the person who most of these people were addicted to, to, to drugs, whether it's selling or, or using. It was, you know, it was a level of addiction and nobody understood it. Nobody cared. It was out of poverty. Now that we have, you know, these, um, these opioids that are affecting a different demographic, you know, they, that's what made the change because they're like, oh, you know, there's a lot of white people who are going to jail for drug crimes now. So we have to, the criteria, you know, this is a health issue now. It's, it's no longer a crime. These are health issues. They're addicted. But when crack cocaine was destroying right. our communities, you know, it was the worst thing in the world and everybody who was involved in it needed to go to jail forever. You know, so we understand the realities. And, but the thing is that since they've starting to recognize all of these situations, we have to be very vigilant about demanding that, you know, the, the, the crimes, because you see them. The crimes that you've given the young black boy that you call um, a violent crime because you say he had a gun that never was fired and he might have stole 20 and 30 dollars from somebody. So now that gives you the reason to give him 20 years in prison. See, this is this is the thing that they say violence to them is anything that could equate to it in our communities. Violence for in their community, somebody actually has to die. You got to get shot. You know, that they, they can act, they have kids who are going to college who have rape charges that they say, you know, we're not going to go to jail, send them to jail because we don't want to ruin their school. We're going to give them programs. You know, those we don't have that. So prison reform would make it look the same way it does on their side as it does on our side and not, you know, completely throwing away our kids who are making mistakes, you know, because first of all, poverty in itself is violence. You know, you you don't, you, you we look at all the violence that's going on in our communities and, and, and a lot of people wanna say, oh, we just, we just bugging out. It's not that simple. You know, when you come from the communities, you understand that the trauma, you know, and the things that we're dealing with, you understand that poverty gives you a sense of hopelessness. You know, and when you and when you feel like you're hopeless, you're gonna do whatever you got to do. And then when you got people feeling like they're fighting over territory because this is how we feed in our family, and everybody can't feed their family on the same corner, you know. So it, it turns into I got to show him I'm tougher than him in order for him for me to eat here, and it turns into wars. And then you know, and those are the things that happen. These are these happen in anywhere where poverty is. You don't see you know, affluent black communities. You don't go to affluent black communities where people are not living in poverty and see blacks committing violence. It just doesn't happen. So we have to look at the root cause of what these things is. So when we talk about prison reform, we have to start reforming the things we're actually locking these kids up for. We have to start changing the need for the crimes that they actually commit. You know, we got to start putting the, the resources back into the communities so that kids don't have to commit crimes. They're on corners making two and $300 a week selling drugs. They're not even making no money. But if you, if you gave them a job, to make the same thing, they would rather do that. You understand what I'm saying? But they don't have the, uh, the other option. So eliminate the reason for the crime, and then you can eliminate, the, then that's what you call prison reform for me. Okay. And I love that answer, by the way. Mice, you're well-spoken. Uh, you know, just in terms of your demeanor and your stature and the way you speak, people can easily look at you 
say, hey, he's the exception. You know, he's not one of them. He, yeah, he, you know how we always hear our white counterparts. I have a black friend. You might be that black friend now. But they look at everybody else as savages. This person has a propensity to commit crime. I look at this person and I'm afraid of them. Can you give briefly an understanding to somebody who might not come from where me and you come from? They're not from the Bronx or any of the Bronxes around the world. Is everybody in jail savages? Is everybody in jail? Because you didn't even belong there. You didn't even commit the crime. So could you just take a second? If you're not speaking to me, you're just speaking to a broader audience. And I say that Everybody in that prison population, what they think they are, because I know it to be different. Yeah, and, and, and the reality for me is that's a very good question because it is one of my biggest arguments. And I have this conversation with brothers from our own community who, who have made it out. And, and, and they make it worse because they look down on the brothers who didn't. And I, and I say to myself all the time, and they be like, oh, well, you did it. And I said, we are the exception. We, we the ones who actually made it out. We're not, the, the rule is most people don't make it out. And it's not because they savage. It's because they, because the, you know, the, the opportunities they didn't have. And look, you know, the bottom line is people say, I wasn't lucky. I worked hard. I said, well, you could have been the Central Park Five. You know, you could have been a keen brother. Like, it, it, it's not about you working hard. We all work hard. You think people don't want to get out of these conditions? You think a brother that sits there and figure out how to be make a drug empire wouldn't want to make that same empire something legal? You know, I said, when you look at Jay-Z, you look at 50 Cent, you look at people who actually had other opportunities when they got out the community and they was given another another way to do something, you see how they maximized on it. I teach courses, I teach educators. They say, why aren't we able to grab the minds of these young black geniuses? Why aren't, why do people like Jay-Z and 50 and T.I. and all these people who probably never graduated from junior high school and high school, we, we, we see that they have genius level talent and, and intellect, but how, why aren't we able to gravitate to it? And I said, because you don't understand the dynamics of what's going on in their homes, in their lives. They don't have, I, I, I broke down yesterday, you know, we did um, our Street Politicians podcast and it's me and we were talking about what goes on in our communities and how in by third and fourth grade, I was dealing with so much inner turmoil in my home between drugs, domestic violence, poverty, you know, all types of things in my household that by the time I got to school, I couldn't even really focus on that. I didn't sleep the whole night. The police was, we was in a police station because my mother and father was fighting and I had to go there and, and, and the, the neighbor, stay at the neighbor's house. I was scared to like, and then I, and now I've got to go to school and you telling me that I, I'm, my behavior is off and I'm, and I'm this bad person, but you don't realize the trauma that we deal with every day, you know? So what I would say to people is that you don't, you, you, you can't understand it. You know how many Rich people go to jail. I've sat in there with mi millionaires who who they're doing probably a year, and they're in the same facility that I'm doing. And they saying like, and they become part of this community. I'm like, damn, I didn't I didn't realize what was going here. Most of these people that I, you would call savages are the ones protecting you and making sure you're good and educating you and showing you how to move through this this facility without somebody killing you and, and you like damn I didn't even understand I didn't I I, I looked down upon th this community I looked down upon black people people from where you from you know and then they start to realize when you put in the same situation you're going to react the same way I tell people all the time poverty creates a level of desperation and violence that you will never be able to identify unless you've actually dealt with it so it's not anyone being savagery the same the same mentality that you celebrate in your army you know will you call this person a general these same kids if they went to the army you would call them generals you would call them purple hearts they because they they have the same level of fearlessness 
It's just put to something different. They feel like this hood is the, is America for them. This is where they was born. This is what the only thing they connect themselves with. These these people here have made them believe that this is all we have and we got to fight and die for this. The same way America has made the soldiers in the army believe that we got to go out here and fight, go to different countries, no matter who we got to kill or whatever, you're doing it for honor. And that's what they've been taught about in these communities. So when you say savagery, why you don't call the Purple Heart soldiers that you that they tell you killed all of these soldiers in war and you come home and celebrate them? They have the same Ooh, mentality. Damn, you know, you preaching. You know, it's the same exact, because I've been there. I've been on the block on my block and say, you're not going to come here and terrorize our block. You know, this is our block. We will die for this block. Whatever it's going to take, it's 10 of us up there. When they come up the block, we fighting. Somebody might get stabbed. Somebody might shoot. And I never, I felt I was doing something out of honor. I looked at my man and said, I'm going to protect you. I'm willing to die for you. You know what I'm saying? We have that same mentality. So when you give us something else to fight for, when you give us something that's positive to fight for, when you when you change and re, retrain the mind state and you give us, you know, just basic human necessities to survive, we don't feel that sense of desperation. We can put that same, you know, integrity. That's why people say, oh, you 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 go by the street code. I, it's, for me, it's a code of integrity as a man, being willing to stand up for what you believe in, stand by whatever you did, and handle however it comes. If you can't do that in the streets, you can't do it nowhere else. You can't be my partner in my business. If I don't, if I don't trust that you got my back, that you're gonna stand by me and whatever comes with it, I don't want to deal with you nowhere in life. So it's not just a street code when you talk about not snitching it. I need if me and you are, are, are partners and they try to tell you, listen, you need to say he did something wrong in business to save yourself, and you willing to do that, it don't have nothing to do with criminality. It's just about integrity. It's about this is my man and whatever it is, we did this together and we're going to deal with it however we got to deal with it as men and he knows that I got his back and I know that he got mine. So I tell people all the time, man, it's not it's not the individual. It is the circumstances that create the individual. There's nobody born savagery. You know, especially not in our communities. We just, that's not who we are. If you talk to most of the most notorious people you know, I know some of these most notorious gang affiliated brothers who are the most humble, loving people you'll ever meet. But when they put them in the jungle and they, and they were surrounded by the lions and the bears, they wasn't going to be prey, you know? And, and that's just the mentality. So give us different community. Give us different circumstances in our community. Change the circumstances and you will see the individual change. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.